Alright, so today we're going to do some parallax effect. Uh, we're not going to implement a library though. We're actually going to write the parallax effects from scratch because I think that's worth more learning. So what is parallax? Flickr just recently redid their website and I, I love the homepage but I don't really like anything else about it. Homepage is nice though. But they have this really nice large scale uh, parallax effect. As you can see here, all of the blocks on the homepage um, they move. And parallax kind of means that you're looking through a window. So it, it's as if I'm looking up and down and I can see more of the image as I scroll. So I looked at this and I said, you know what? That looks easy. I should be able to do that. But it wasn't easy. And I'm going to go through with you now how to do it. So here's our document. Let's get started. So to start this off, uh, we're going to do some standard uh, HTML slash HTML yeah we're, we're actually gonna do this from the raw so head head body body so we're gonna need a couple things right so we're gonna need jQuery although jQuery isn't gonna be much of a friend to us as you might think we're gonna have to do a lot of stuff in raw JavaScript but that's that script then we're going to need some style, type equals text slash CSS, boom, style. OK, now our markup. Our markup is going to be pretty simple. We're just going to have um, kind of a UL. This is going to be a list, so a UL. We're just going to call that class equals parallax UL. Then we're going to have an LI, and each LI we have is going to have a div in it. And the div, so the li is our window frame, and the div is kind of like the like the background, what you see in the window, and that's going to be a class equals parallax background, right? So that's fine. Uh, yeah, then we'll close the div. I'm going to give this first one a class because I'm going to assign it a background image. Uh, we're not going to animate the background image like some parallax effects. We're just going to give it one so we get it out of the markup. So that's going to be a lens. Uh, so that's one. Um, one thing, two, three, four, we're going to do four. So we have a lens, we're going to have, actually we'll do a flower first, then we'll do a lens, and then we've got a beach, and then we've got a wolf, right? So there's those. And so the styles for those are going to be, did we close the UL? We did. Okay, so that's fine there. So let's just do a couple generic styles real quick. Uh, we're going to just take the body and the UL here and just zero out the margins. And then we're going to grab our, our wolf lens classes for our background images. Right, because our things have no height, of course. So, sorry, going crazy here. Uh, ULLI, which before we move on, actually needs to have a list style none. Needs to be overflow hidden because it's a window. And things can't flow out of windows. Um, yeah, so then for the parallax background, uh, we're just going to give them a height so that we can see what's going on. 700 pixels. Um, yeah, and refresh. And nothing still. Going crazy. If we give the LI our height of 600 pixels, so the window is smaller than the big image, because I read it wrong. Because I did that. That's why. Because I'm not. Because it's late at night and I shouldn't be doing these late at night. Sorry, I put my quote in the wrong place. I should probably edit that out. We'll see if I have time to not edit that out. Okay. Now, boom! Okay. <laughs> Woo! Alright, so now we just have a bunch of images, right? So, you know, here we go. Some of them aren't so big. Some of them are big. And we kind of have the beginnings of our thing. So, let me rephrase what happened here. Let me get rid of some things. Okay. So... We need to make our, our 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 backgrounds need to be bigger than our window. So we're going to make our window a height of 600 and our backgrounds a height of 700. So we know that there's a 100 pixel difference between the heights. That's going to give us 100 pixels of movement, if you can think about that. 100 pixels of movement, okay, which is fine. We don't need any more than that. It's going to give us a great effect. So we need to adjust our backgrounds, though, because like the flower is like, way too far to the side. It's not looking good. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, background position and we're gonna say like 50 percent 100 percent that should move the flower that's that's better it's kinda high x y so let's maybe put that at like 90 percent 
And 70%. Come on, let's get better. All right, that's better. The lens, I kind of I kind of like the lens over to the side like that. Uh, kind of too much, though. So X, so let's make that, uh, you know, like 80. And 100. I keep, I'm adjusting the flower. No wonder I didn't see it. Uh, background position. Let's let's do 50%, 100%, just like the other one. To kind of move it. That's that's better. Now uh, fixing this guy. So that's you know that's bad. So we're gonna do background size cover, which should uh, make it fit. Awesome. Uh, you know, and I like the way that looks. The wolf needs to be moved a little bit. So we're gonna put a background position. These are kind of the starting positions for things, so, you know, I'm just kind of putting them in there. If I do that, you know, that's his ass. That's not really cool. So, you know, put that down. That's more of his ass. Really not cool. That's better. It's, yeah. Uh, that's not really what I want. That's cool. Okay, so there we go. Three images that kind of visible, you know, I didn't quite do exactly what Flickr did, but, you know, you get the idea. Things things are going well. So, that's kind of the base. Um, now for the hard part. So the hard part is going to be the script. So let's, and I'm actually going to do the script at the bottom of the page, because that's what you're supposed to do with JavaScript. You're supposed to put it down here. So that's what we're going to do, because we do things the right way. So. Right, so let's start some jQuery, and I'll, I'll kind of walk through this. So start some jQuery like this. Boom. Pass in jQuery. Okay. So now we started some jQuery. First thing we're going to do, we need a render loop. We're going to use request animation frame to just be running as we go. We're just going to have our loop just running, and as we scroll our render loop at the right amount of intervals is going to be adjusting our screen. We don't want to do it on scroll because that fires too many events and chokes up the browser. So here's a, here's a loop that's going to run outside of jQuery. Actually, no, inside of jQuery. This is going to run. This function is only available in certain browsers. Go look at go look up Paul Irish request animation frame for like a really good uh, polyfill so you can use this wherever. But this is going to run a, a render function a lot. So we're going to have a function render, or um, the way you should do it, var render equals function. So this is going to run all the time. So if I'll console.log, hey, just to make sure we're on the right track, um, it's going to give me an unexpected token because I wrote something wrong, because this is not how you write code properly. OK, so the error here is that because this is a, um, a self-executing function, where it basically defines itself, runs itself, and executes itself because they didn't have a semicolon here. Um, th this is running into itself and trying to execute this as a function. So the, the the thing to fix here is put a semicolon there. So now if I refresh, you see I get hey a lot of times. Okay, so this render function is being called. So now this render function is being called at 60 frames per second, which is awesome. We need 60 frames per second to do this constant animation that we're going to be doing. So now let's talk about uh, the render function. The render function has to do a bunch of stuff. It's going to have to loop through each of the divs on the page. Okay, So before we do that loop, we have to get a reference to the divs on the page. So we're going to get a reference to our container, which is going to be our, our uh, parallax. So dot parallax. That's our main UL. Um, then, we, then we're going to need our divs. So var divs equals, um, and that's going to be container.find.div.parallax background, right? So there's our divs. Then, now that we have our divs, so here we need to loop through our divs. But we're going to do our loop in a nice, efficient way. Um, I am going to copy this and then tell you what this is. So this is a for loop that you've seen before. We're not using an each loop because a for loop is way faster than an each loop. We have to have efficiency in order to do this. So for i equals 0, length equals divs.length, i less than length, i plus plus. This is not four things, I know what you're thinking. This is one part, but the comma is just saying I'm defining these two variables. But because we're using i and, and length, we actually need to define them. So var i 
and var length. Okay, so we've def we're defining a bunch of variables that we need. We don't want to use the word var in here because for the JavaScript engine to scope new variables out, um, it's that's slow. So we want to keep the word var out of here. So now we're looping through divs. So so loop through divs. Now let's kind of write out what we need to do. So we need to um, get one div, right? So get one div. Then we need to um, get the parent li so we can get data on it. We need to calculate the offset top of the li. I'm sorry, of the div, of the div that we have. Then we want to calculate the amount to scroll. They want to apply the scroll amount. Okay, so get one div. So to get one div, we're going to say div equal, and that's going to be divs i, which is going to be a DOM element. So now we have the word div. So let's add that to our variables list. Now we're going to get the parent. So that's going to be div dot parent node, and that's going to be li equals, right? So that's going to be li equals. So now we have an li to add up here. So now we have a parent li. Now we're going to calculate the top. We're going to use jQuery because it does a bunch of cool stuff for us. So we're going to say offset equals. Um, we're going to say div. So we're going to use jQuery here. I'd rather not use jQuery because it's the slowness of having to use jQuery here, but that's okay. Um, it's better in the in the run here. So offset dot top. This is going to give us. Um, and I wrote a little diagram here. So the offset top is this right here. It's if this is our element that we want to be parallaxing in our current loop. The offset top is this position right here in reference to the top of the document. So this whole arrow is the offset top. Okay? So that's offset. Now we want to calculate the amount to scroll. So that's going to be scroll equals, and I'm using the word offset and the word scroll, so we need to add those up here. So offset and scroll. So scroll is going to be equal to, well, it's going to be top minus offset, but you don't know what top is yet. So let's talk about top. In order to do the math, we need the, the scroll position of the page. Okay? So, but we don't need that in here because the scroll position doesn't change through each div. The scroll position changes through each iteration of the loop. So outside of the for loop, we're going to say um, top, and that's going to be equal to um, this, our current scroll position. So what's our current scroll position? Well, the only thing scrolling is is the body, right? So if we go over here and we say, if we go over here and we say document dot body dot scroll top, that's what's scrolling. There's nothing else that's scrolling. So I'm going to add a variable here called var thing being scrolled, and I'm going to call that document dot body. I'm doing that because you might want something else to be scrolled, not just the body. But for this, we'll do that thing to be scrolled, and that's going to be the scroll top. So this is our um, thing we're scrolling, right? So that's the scroll position. So it's going to be top minus offset, and then that's going to be one kind of uh, number. And then we're going to divide that by the height of each window. That's the li height. The height of the windows don't change, so we're going to calculate it out here. So var li height equals, now I know the height up here is, is 600, but we want to pull that in through JavaScript, right? So we need to grab one of the divs, so divs that eq zero, and then we want to basically uh, get so the closest li. So we want to get the first, just get one of them, um, and then dot height, right? So that's that. So that's the li height. Uh, we we also at this point are going to need uh, the difference in the heights, the difference between the 700 and the 600. I know that's 100 pixels, but we got to calculate it. So that's going to be the height of one of the divs, which is bigger minus the height of one of the LIs, right? So we're going to just do that in one call, called diff height, and that's going to be equal to uh, divs.eq0, so the first div uh, dot height minus LI height, right? So that's going to be the difference in the height, which is going to be 100 pixels in our case. And to look at the diagram, you can see that it's the difference between this offset and this top. This is our scroll top where we are right now, and this is the, the guy that we're looking for, okay? So we're going to get the difference between these two. So that's the diff height. So right back in our equation, it's divided by li height, and then that's that's a whole thing. And now this is going to be a small number. We need to now multiply this number by the diff height that we just calculated. Um, I wish I could tell you I understand this fully. I don't.
um, experimenting got me here. Uh, a friend of mine, Ross Haddon, got me here. So I, I unfortunately uh, I can't say I know exactly how it works. But I know that we need to round this, right? So we're going to do a math.round this whole thing, okay? Because we don't want odd numbers because it's bad for rendering. And now we need to apply it. So we're just going to say div.style. And we're going to do this as a WebKit transform because it's fast. And I'll show you in a minute what's not fast. So I'm going to do a translate 3D, 0 pixels, comma. And now we're going to need our, our thing. And then we're going to have, um, yeah, we're going to have a thing there. And that's going to be pixels. And then we're going to have zero pixels again. So we're kind of just doing, um, we're kind of just doing the uh, the Y position, right? That makes sense. We're just going to scroll the Y. And so what is this? That's going to be the scroll that we just calculated. So that's going to be that position. So now with this, we are getting a bunch of things before we start setting a bunch of variables. This is our render function that gets called 60 frames per second. We calculate what our top is, and our top needs to be here. So we calculate kind of what our top is. Then we loop through each of our divs in a very fast way. We get one div, we get the parent div, we calculate the offset, we calculate the scroll, and then we apply it. And so if you take a look what happens, now, as I scroll, nothing happens, you know, because, you know, it doesn't work on the first time, usually. Uh, so, Let's see. It'd be this. Oh, I had I had a dot in front of the div here, which is not a class. That's wrong. Let's just confirm. Yep, they're all there now. Let's get rid of this. Refresh, and there we go. So now we've got our parallax effect kind of going on here. So as you can see, as I scroll, it's kind of making a window. I'll grab this, and you can see a little window effect there. Okay. And it looks like I'm looking through the different areas. So that's that's how you do the basic parallax effect. Uh, I'm going to add something cool here. I'm going to go ahead and, and kind of copy and paste this. I'm going to add some subcontent onto one of these here, next to these, not on top of, next to, like that. And then I'm going to style the sample content a little bit. I'll show you what I'm doing in a second. Uh, and I'm going to make that sample content position absolute so it's it doesn't move. And then I'm going to uh, style my H1 and H2. So once I, I check that, you can see, and that's actually a, a really bad, a bad place for that. Um, it totally shouldn't be there. And that's because I didn't make each of my divs position relative. And now it will obey that. No, it won't. Position relative. Right, because that's not the parent. The parent is this. This is the parent. Now it will obey. There we go. So now what's cool about this is the text really gives you a perspective. Like the text stays in the same spot as that moves. And, and I'll, I'll do this one more time on, down here just, just to give you a really good idea. So you can see how as I move, it really gives the effect of, of that vision. So it's really cool in that sense. Um, I also realize that we're not using this LI at all since we cached it all so we don't really need that works fine without it so yeah so that's your basic uh, that's your basic parallax effect with text um, if you want to do it not as the whole body of the page um, there's a couple extra things you have to do but but generally this is this is kind of the technique here and uh, if you want that schematic again of how this works it's right here thanks for watching